Well, happy Halloween! It is the day before Halloween, and I know that you had to experience Miss Tash's witch's nose, didn't you? And of course, I am all what color? Purple! And of course, you know what Miss Tasha. And Halloween's the perfect time to give a whole bunch of what? I love chocolate. I know. And then, of course, my infamous voice. But remember, I love Halloween. That's why both my, both my readings this, this month have been all Halloween because I just love Halloween and I have so many hats, oh my gosh. Uh, and uh, remember, if you didn't get to see me on the 16th, yesterday was Miss Tasha's quarter of a century birthday. And I'm not going to tell you what, what quarter of a century means. You have to figure it out what three quarters of a century of, of uh, you know, for Miss Tasha. All right, so I've got to take this off, and I got to put. I have to keep switching hats on this one. So this one has to be one where I keep switching hats. Okay, so I'm going to start with this one. You don't know why I'm starting with this one because it's the the book is different. All right, here we go. All right, this title is Boo. Now I read another one with googly eyes last time, but this is a cute different one. This is Boo. It's by Lindsay Sager, Amy Chapman, Hannah Cochine, uh, Kyle Hamley. Uh, copyright was 2018. It was published by St. Martin's Press by the Pretty Books. P-R-I-D-D-Y. Pretty Books. Okay. And it's Boo. Okay. So, of course, you know why I'm wearing that. Because, of course, what's the very first thing? But a frog. Now, whenever time I, even though I can't see you do this. Every time I go like this, I want you to go boom. Okay. All right. Got it. Which is frogs? We green is goo. One goes hop hop. The other says boo. I hope you all said boo. Now I don't have one for this one. I know it's terrible. I don't have one for this one. Fuzzy monsters, fuzzy and blue. One goes stomp stomp. And the other says ready. Boo. Okay. Now this one. Wait a minute. Da -da -da -da. Uh, there we go. Okay, because of course this is the ghost. Shimmery ghost floating through. One goes whoosh, whoosh, and the other says, boom. Okay. All right, now it's hard because these are new books, guys, and then they don't want to turn for Miss Tasha. Oh, you're going to love this one. Are you ready? <laughs> Guess what I'm going to talk about now? Mm-hmm, I know. And of course, what color is it? I mean, really, cannot believe all these books do this because they know Miss Tash is going to be reading them. Vampire Bats 1 and 2. One goes flap, flap. The other one says, boo. Yes. Dancing together at the spooky boogaloo. What do we all say? We all say, ready? Boo. Isn't that a good one? I know that's a good one. Okay, now, da -da -da -da, this goes off, and this goes on. <laughs> da -da -da -da. <clears throat> because this, guys, is five black cats. And see, it's purple, but there's black cats all over the place. And then afterwards, let me move, move my lovely little guy out of it. And of course, my friend actually made me a nice book bag that has a purple Halloween hat on it. You're going to dance to do the little black cat here, which happens to have a lavender, lavender hat, what can I say? All right. Five black cats. The text is by Patricia Hegarty, illustrated by Julia Wolfe. The copyright is 2013, and the publisher is Little Tiger Tales Press. I love that. All right, here we go. I better put you over back here so they can see. Five black cats on a dark, misty night sit in a row beneath the moonlight. Five black, black cats on a shadowy street looking around. Who will they meet? Five black cats now out on the prowl. Oh, they stop in their tracks at the hoot, hoot of an owl. Five black cats softly slinking around. Suddenly hear a strange ghostly sound. Oh. Five black cats bravely swishing their tails. 
following the sound of the low eerie wheels. You know who that is. That's the werewolf, you know. Five black cats, to their great surprise, are watched by jack-o'-lantern eyes. Five black cats spot a tiny white mouse. It was the tiny white mouse. And it's scurrying into a spooky old house. Five black cats hear the little mouse squeak. Then Dodge opened the door with a loud creak, creak. Five black cats creep through the empty rooms. At the top of the stairs, a dark shadow looms. Oh my gosh. Five black cats get a bit of a scare as the flip flapping wings of a bat fills the air. All of a sudden, someone turns on the light. What a surprise. It's the ghost party night. Look it. So they're all at a party. There's the frog and there's the ghost and there's the bat and there's the spider and, and there's the witch and the skeleton and the, another ghost. Oh, how much fun. And the jack-o'-lanterns, all the jack-o'-lanterns. Isn't that cute? All right. Now, you guys are going to dance to this cute little guy, okay? And this is a really short one, but this is my new one. I just bought this one for this year. I couldn't resist because, of course, it had a black cat. Here we go, Nick. Gotta watch this. Here we go. Down, up, and up. Now turn. Up. That's what it's all about. Miss Tasha has to have a drink of water. That, that tired Miss Tasha out. If I can get to it. And you know, I'm 100% that witch. Just thought I'd let you know. Okay. Now the next one I'm going to read. Uh, uh, I got this from the manager at Bank of America. Wasn't that nice? She said, Tasha, you have to have this book. And this one is by Julia Donaldson. Pictures are by Axel Schedel. And copyright is 2001, publishers, division books uh, for young readers, uh, division of Penguin Young Reader Group. All right, this is so cute, because of course she has a purple sh skirt on. Okay, I gotta move you back over here so they can see. All right, is this it? Oh, wait, got a second. Here we go. She has a kitty cat with her. And of course she has, look at the black, black crow, don't you love the hat? The witch had a cat and a hat that was black. A long ginger hair with a braid down her back. How the cat purred and how the witch grinned as they sat on the broomstick and flew through the wind. But how the wind wailed and how the cat spat when the wind blew so wildly it blew off the hat. Down, said the, cried the witch as they flew to the ground. They searched for the hat, but no hat could be found. Then out of the bushes, on thundering paws, there bounded a dog with a hat in his paws. Oh, in his jaws, excuse me. He dropped it politely, the e then eagerly said, as the witch pulled the hat firmly back down on her head, I'm a dog as keen as can be. Is there room on the broom for a dog like me? Yes, cried the witch, and the dog clambered on. The witch tapped the broomstick, and they whoosh, they were gone. Uh-oh, something came off. Over the fields and the forest they flew. The dog wagged his tail and the stormy wind blew. The witch laughed out loud <laughs> and held onto her hat. But away blew the bow from her braid just like that. Oh, no. Down, cried the witch as they flew to the ground. They searched for the bow, but no bow could be found. Well, look, at they're looking for it in all of this. Oh, jeez. Then from out of a tree with an ear spreading screech, flapped a green bird with a bow in her beak. She dropped it politely and bent, bent her head low, then said to the witch, 
as the witch tied her braid in her bow, I'm a bird as green as can be. Is there room on the broom for a bird like me? Yes, cried the witch. So the bird fluttered on, fluttered on, and the witch tapped the broomstick, and whoosh, they were gone. Uh-oh, now what did she drop? What did she drop? You know what this is? Her wand. Over the roads and the rivers they flew, the birds shrieked with glee and the stormy wind blew. They shoot through the sky to the back and beyond. The witch clutched her bow and but let go of her wand. Down, cried the witch, and they flew to the ground. They searched for that wand, but no wand could be found. Then all of a sudden, from out of the pond leaped a dripping wet frog with a dripping wet wand. He dropped it politely and then said with a croak, as the witch dried the wand on the fold of her cloak. I'm a frog, as clean as can be. Is there room on the broom? Yes, for a frog like me. Yes, said the witch, and the frog bounded on. The witch tapped the broomstick and whoosh, they were gone. Over the moors and the mountains they flew. The frog jumped for joy, and the broom snapped in two. Too many people on the broom. Down fell the cat and the dog and the frog. Down they went tumbling into a bog. The witch's hat broomstick flew into a cloud and the witch heard a roar that was scary and loud. Oh my word. I'm a dragon as mean as can be and the witch will, with french fries, taste delicious to me. No! cried the witch. Flying higher and higher, the dragon flew after her, breathing out fire. Help! cried the witch. Flying down to the ground, she looked all around, but no help could be found. The dragon drew nearer, and with the glint in his eye, and just said, Just this once, I'll have witch without fries. Oh no. Oh my gosh, look at that monster. Look at all the eyes. Do you know who they are? But just as he planned to begin on his feast, from out of the ditch rose a horrible beast. It was tall, dark, and sticky, and feathered, and furred, and it had four frightful heads, and had wings like a bird, and its terrible voice, when it started to speak, was a yowl, and a growl, and a croak, and a shriek. It dripped, and it swelched, and it strode from the ditch, as, and it said to the dungeon, Buzz off! That's my witch! The dragon drew back and started to shake. I'm sorry, he sputtered. I made a mistake. It's nice to have met you, but now I must fly. And he spread out his wings and off through the sky. Then down flew the bird, down jumped the frog, down climbed the cat, and phew, said the frog, the dog. Thank you, oh thank you, the grateful witch cried. Without you, I'd have been in the dragon's inside. Oh, that's for sure. Then she filled up her cauldron and said with a grin, Find something, everyone, throw something in. So the frog found a lily, the cat found a comb, the bird found a twig, and the dog found a, what, what do you think a dog would find? A ball. They threw all them in, and the witch stirred them well, and while she was stirring, she muttered a smell, a spell, excuse me, ligety ziggity zaggity zoo then out rose. A truly magnificent broom. Look at they all have. He has a shower that the, he has. He has a place where he can hang with his nest, and they have. Oh my gosh, they have seats. With seats for the witch and the cat and the dog, a nest for the bird and a pool for the frog. Yes, cried the witch, and they all clambered on. The witch tapped the broomstick, and whoosh, they were gone. Is that a darling book? Yes, that is it. And of course, you know, this uh, is something pretty good too. Okay, so now this goes off. And now I'm just going to wear a little, my hair is getting flat. Now I'm going to just wear a little hat, okay? And this is a cute one. This is Trick or Treat with Tow Truck Joe. It's by June Sobel. It's illustrated by Patrick Corrigan. Copyrights 2020. The publisher is Hutton Mifflin Harcourt Publishing Company. Now the challenge, uh, what we're going to have to do is when they when they uh, take this, they're going to have to do an up close of the of the back of the book. 
because you have to find five things that are different. That's your challenge. Are you ready? Halloween has just begun. It's a frightful a night of fright and fun. Joe and Pat prepare to meet all their friends to trick or treat. Share me tires. Yo ho ho, it's Pirate Joe, all set to go. Oh my goodness, he even has a mustache. Oh my word. Okay, here we go. Well, lots of traffic filled the street, all dressed up, trick or treat. Look, there's a mummy. Oh my gosh, there's a robot. Uh, there's a buzzy. He looks like a he looks like a bee. Oh my gosh, he looks like a bat. Well, that is so cute. Cars and trucks slow to a creep, honking boo instead of beep. Around the corner, they set a uh, they set a scene. A witch's broom flies in the air. Oh, oh no! Pax the pup cries out, "Yelp! Witch is in the ditch! Joe can help!" And so he gets her out. I love all these things that are. Oh, a ghost? Really? Cars and trucks screech with fright. A ghost looms large and in the night. A giant shadow's moving roar. Headlights high. Joe has no fear. Ah! The wind whips up in a sudden breeze and the ghost white sheet is in the trees. A loader's bucket filled with sweets tips upside down. It's raining trees! Candy falling all around, sticky gooey on the ground. Traffic slows, wheels are stuck on Halloween. What bad luck. Little Joe can't move at all. And look at he's a he's a monster. And Joe tells Pat who to call. Sirens blare, headlights beam, a fire truck joins the team. A huge hose sprays the treat, and now the little car can trick or treat. And look at oh my goodness, he's a dragon. Aren't these a darling? All these I thought I, that's another challenge you're going to have to do. I want you to see if you can come up with some type of, of a costume for some type of a car or a truck or whatever, even a motorcycle. Oh my gosh, you got to do this. Look, monster truck is in trouble. Joe and Pat race on the double, carrying such a heavy load, two, flat, two tires flatten on the road. Oh no. Joe wonders who can lift him up. T-Rex the train, says Pax the Pup. You aren't going to believe this. Are you ready? Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> the crane truck rumbles around the bend. He's big and strong. He's our friend. The tires are changed. It's time to go to the spooky garage of truck, tow truck Joe. And look. They all have their lights on. And there's the Halloween. I love it. Outside the home of Patch and Joe, Pumpkin smile and glow sticks glow. Okay, now here is the here's the other challenge besides coming up with costumes for for cars and trucks. On this one, there are two trucks, the tow trucks, but there are five. It says tow truck Joe and his pup Patch are ready to trick or treat, but five surprises around every turn. Can you spot five differences between these two? trucks. Five differences. Some of them are really easy, like that one has stripes, that doesn't have stripes, so you only have to figure out four. Another easy one is what? Right. He has a mustache, he doesn't have a mustache. Can you figure out another one? Look at the dog. Look at the dog. Can you figure out the dog? He has a striped shirt, he has a plain shirt. Okay, we're down to two left. Hmm. Oh, I can see one of them. Something's missing over here that is over here. Look at it. It's the crane. Remember, he's a tow truck. Okay, there's one more left. And this one took me a while. <laughs> took me a while to figure it out. But I figured it out. you got to look at the tires. This one has a hubcap. That one doesn't have a hubcap. Isn't that fun? That was kind of a fun little thing to do, yes. All right. Now... <sighs> All right, this one goes off, and here is my final hat. Oh my goodness. Now, both that really big, beautiful hat and this hat were given to me by my, by my good friend, Debbie Blassengame, who I get to see next week. She moved to Florida, but she's coming back for a visit, and so I get to see her. But isn't this a, ooh, because, of course, we're going to end today with doing the Hocus Pocus dance, of course. All right, <clears throat> here we go. This is a big spooky house.
All right, it is by Donna Washington, illustrated by Jacqueline Rogers. Copyright is 2000, published uh, Jump at the Sun, Hyperion Paperbacks for Children. I thought that was very different. Okay, here we go. Once there was a man. He was a big man. He was a strong man. And he knew it. He went around picking fights with people just because he knew he would win. He never walked away from trouble because he figured he could always battle his way out of it. Well, one day, the people of his village told him that the army needed volunteers. Since you're a big, strong man, said one of the ladies, and you have love to fight, you ought to see if you can jo join and fight in the army. He thought about it and he said, yeah. He put his belongings on his back and started down the road. One of his neighbors hollered after him, hey, it's a long walk, do you want to give, give you a ride in my car? He was a big man, he was a strong man, and he said, I'll walk. Okay. Well, as he was going across the countryside, he saw an inn. The innkeeper said, it's going to break this evening, don't, why don't you stop and stay at, at my inn tonight? He was a big man, he was a strong man, and he said, I don't care if I get wet. So he walked on until the sun went down, and as soon as the sky was dark, there was an incredible peal of thunder. Boom! And the skies opened and the rain came down in sheets. He was a big man, he was a strong man, and he was a wet man, and he didn't like it one bit. Uh-oh. Then he looked down and he tried to figure out and find a place that was dry, when all of a sudden a flash of lightning, he saw a big spooky house up on the hill. Now, most people would have stayed away from that house. It was dark, and the gate was falling down, and the windows were broken, and paint was peeling, and there were holes in the roof and weeds growing all around. Most people would have stayed away, but not him, because he was a big man, a strong man, and he was not going to be scared by someone's spooky house sitting up on a big spooky hill kind of man. Okay. Oh, my gosh, look at the front door. Of course, it's purple, you notice. He went up the door, and when he reached the doorknob, the door opened all by itself. Crick! Now, most people would not have gone, would have left there then and there, but not him. He was a big man, a strong man, and he went right on in. <sighs> look how beautiful it is. Ooh, look. Oh, my word. Outside, the place was falling apart, but inside it was beautiful. There was red carpet on the floor leading down a long hallway. Even though the windows were all dark outside, there were candles burning all over the in the candlesticks, candle holders. And he goes, yeah, because he's nice and warm and dry now. He followed the red carpet to the end of the hallway. There was a huge wooden door. He reached out to open it, but it opened by him by itself. Oh, now most people might have been a little bit more cautious, a little frightened by this, but no, nope, not him. He was a big man, he was a strong man, and he went right in the room. <gasps> Look at all that food. There was a huge fire with the crackling logs. There was a huge stuffed chair facing the fire, and in front of the chair was a table covered with lots of good things to eat. He just looked at everything and said, yeah. Now, some people might have been too terrified to eat, but not him. He was a big man, he was a strong man, and he sat down and he got to work. He had that table cleared in no time. But then when he finished, he sat back and put his feet on the little stool, and when he opened his eyes, the table had disappeared. He looked around and said, Yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh, look what he sees. He fell asleep in front of the fire and he fell fast asleep up in the comfortable chair until the clock on the wall began to chime bong, 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 bong. It chimed 12 times. The man jumped up and said, what, what? Oh, it's just the clock. The door behind him opened and in came a black cat. See, there's the black cat. Its fur was matted and dirty. Its eyes were as red as wood and, and it came across the floor scraping its claws on the wood in a voice that was thin and squeaky when it meowed, it walked over to the fireplace, jumped in the middle of the flames, picked up a flaming hot coal, and started to lick it. Then it looked straight at the man and said in a slow, screechy voice, Are you going to be here? 
when John gets here. Well, he was a big man and strong man, and he was uh, not going to be scared of any cat sitting in a fireplace licking any coal kind of man. So he sat, stared at the fireplace, and he said, I'll be here when John gets here. And that. He snapped his fingers to prove he didn't care. He sat back in his chair and he went back to sleep. Bong! The clock had struck one. The man said, uh, what, what? Oh, it was just the clock. The door behind him opened and in came another black hat. Now this is a lot bigger black hat. This one was the size of a Doberman Pinscher. It had black matted fire, fur and fiery red eyes just like the, the other one and its voice was deep and snarly. It walked over to the fireplace, sat next to the other cat, picked up a log, bit off the end, and sat there crunching it noisily, looking out at the man in a slow, snarly voice. Are you going to be here when John gets here? Look at this, sitting in the fireplace in the fire, guys. He was a big man, he was a strong man, but he was a worried man. But he'd never run from anything in his life, and he wasn't about to start now. So he looked straight at that great big cat and said, I'll be here when John gets here, and that. So he snapped his fingers. Then he looked around at the shadows of the room and then added, and I'm not scared. Then he sat back in that chair, and the truth be told, it took him quite a while to get back to sleep. Oh my word. Look at that cat. Oh my gosh. Bong, bong. The clock struck two. The man said, what, what? Oh, it was just the clock. The door behind him opened and in came another black cat. This one was the size of a large pony. Its hair was thick and matted with straw and sticks. Its eyes were bright red and they were big and they were, they gave off their own light. Its voice was deep, loud, and gravelly. It walked over to the fireplace. It ate up the other two cats. Then it licked the fireplace clean. Then it turned those glowing red eyes back toward that man. It opened its mouth to show two rows of long, needle-sharp teeth. Then it said to the man in a slow, deep, gravelly voice, Are you going to be here when John is here. <laughs> he was a big man, he was a strong man, but he was a gone man. He ran. And the cat just looks like, what? But look, who do you think John is? I think it's even a bigger cat. And that's the end of the tale. I know. <laughs> okay, for our final, 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 we have to do my favorite one of all, and this is Hocus Pocus, which is really like Hokey Pokey, okay? Okay, this is our big finale. Now, I did do this last year, but this is one of my favorite ones. It's Hokey Pokey, but you're, it's Hocus Pocus, okay? And so, at the very end of this, you have to go, whoa, okay? That's what you have to do at the very end. I mean, it's, it's just fun, but you can do it. All right, here we go. Okay, hold head in. Now hold head out. Hold head in. Now shake it. Now turn around. Okay, now two times. Clap and snap. Ready, go. Whoa! Want to do it one more time? Let's do it one more time. What the heck? All right, here we go. Now you know. Put the head in. Head out. Put your hold head in. Shake! You can do it! Now two times. Two times. Snap. Here we go. Whoa! Alright. Well, I hope that you all have a very happy Halloween tomorrow. Of course, you know what Miss Tash is going to be wearing tomorrow all day. I'm going to definitely be Halloween-y because I love Halloween. And have a good time. And, oh, my goodness, in November, you know, I always have to wear my turkey hat. I know you always have to experience that, too. So have a good time. Don't eat too much candy. Bye-bye.